Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Finding Genius podcast, now part of the Finding Genius Foundation. Um, I'm going to talk to you about more details uh, with the Anxiety and Depression Codex, the huge guide of information that we're putting together over the next 18 months. So I wanted to tell you, I've, I've referenced, uh, I believe it was 17 plus possible treatments for depression. I just want to list of, you know, a bunch of them out just so you can know what, what the thinking is here. What do uh, brain scans say? Are there structural differences in people with depression? Are there areas that light up or fail to light up? What about uh, brain EEG, you know, brain wave activity in people that are depressed or anxious, uh, brain waves that happen while they're having, you know, an episode of it, let's say a panic attack or they're feeling down versus feeling normal. What, what will this tell us? Hormones, enzymes, and other biomarker imbalances or trends. What are the important ones that could that could tell you if you get blood work, mm, if I could fix these levels, then I may be able to alleviate my depression and, and or anxiety. So are there hormone, enzyme, or other biomarkers that, that cause this? We're going to look at genetic approaches, uh, SNPs. These are single errors or changes in your DNA. We're going to look at epigenetics. So how you live, the environment you're in, what you eat, what you inhale, etc. Um, all that changes what's called your epigenetics. It regulates your gene function. Turn some off, turn some on, makes some stronger, makes some weaker, etc. So we're going to look at genetic approaches as well to depression and anxiety. We're going to look at uh, depression and anxiety um, after perhaps someone's been infected by a parasite or they had a viral or a bacterial infection or they have diabetes or dementia or aging or emotional trauma, stress, obesity, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, cancer, flu, other illnesses, etc. Chemical exposure, environmental pollution. So we're going to be reading papers and listening to seminars and gathering information on all of these possible reasons for depression and anxiety and what to do about them. We're going to look at cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a form of psychotherapy that is uh, reputed to be very effective for anxiety and depression. We are going to cover prescription drugs you know, SSRIs, antipsychotics, etc., because uh, we don't want to leave them out. They do help a certain amount of people, and they, they help them quite a bit. So I'm thankful that these drugs are out there, but again, they're not all of the story, but they do need to be included. We're going to look at psychedelics, magic mushrooms, you know, psilocybin. That's for depression. Uh, at Johns Hopkins, they're doing studies on it. It's in clinical trials. It actually may be available in a city near you in the next year or so, in the next two years. But it's coming. They're doing clinical trials uh, for depression on mushrooms. Ecstasy, also in clinical trials for PTSD. Ketamine, this is actually in use. It's useful in some cases for depression and anxiety. So we're going to include that. Other drugs, other psychedelics. But psychedelics are actually becoming a really powerful tool in fighting an anxiety and depression. And we're going to include them. We're going to look at plant medicine, not just psychedelics, but are there certain plants and herbs, essential oils, supplements? You know, but we may have heard of St. John's wort that uh, appears to be scientifically based on many articles and can help with depression a bit. But we're going to look at these areas too. We're going to look at dietary intervention and your microbiome. If you consume very little fermented foods, if you consume probiotics or you don't, would this affect depression and anxiety? We're going to look at uh, chronic late night blue light exposure from smartphones, tablets, computers, and televisions. We're going to look at low deuterium diets. This is courtesy of a woman named uh, Dr. Petra Davilar. A little bit technical, but um, there are ways to modulate what you eat uh, that this doctor and uh, other research has shown uh, may help with anxiety and depression. She tells me there are many dozens of testimonials she has, so it does appear that this, this can help in certain circumstances. We're going to look at plasmalogen supplementation, which plasmalogens, I got this from uh, Dr. Dayan Goodno. Uh, he tells me they help uh, your cell membranes to keep them robust and protective of your cells. And he also mentioned that uh, it appears, at least anecdotally so far, that it may help with anxiety and depression. We're going to look at other alternatives, acupuncture, massage, meditation, mindfulness, etc. We are also going to look at uh, religious belief, support networks of friends and family, satisfaction at work, level of autonomy you have in your life, 
your personal relationships. These are all the areas, and I'm sure there'll be more that occur. These are all possible treatments, reasons for, and ways to, to fix, at least partially, anxiety and depression. So I want to see if we can research everything possible. Again, like I mentioned in another article, you know, another audio, uh, any given practitioner probably knows about 1% of all the treatments out there. What if we can gather 21%? That's home run on top of home run on top of home run. So that's the goal here with the codex. I know we got detailed here, but I wanted to give you a sense of some of the stuff we're looking at. We do need your help. The project's going to cost 500000 probably more. Uh, I can fund part of it. I just honestly can't afford to fund the whole thing. So we need your help. We're a 501c3 registered charity with the IRS. Uh, if you go to findinggeniusfoundation.org and click on donate, anything you can do. 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever it may be, uh, the help is much appreciated and we need it. So thank you for listening.